Hi, this is Jay Cho. Um, today I just wanted to explain how the occupancy closing works. I mean, when I say occupancy closing, usually the biggest question people have would be, how much does it cost uh, to 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 you know close to do the occupancy closing? So today I just want to show you a sample of statement of adjustment from the builder and go through the document with you and just kind of explain to you how what you have to bring in and what it is that that consists of uh in terms you know when we do the occupancy closing and you know when we say the funds what does that mean what what kind of when you say funds like you know what does it consist of how much do you need to bring in okay without further ado let's talk about this so this is typical interim statement of adjustments when we do the occupancy closing builder will send you a document like this you know a week before and stating out uh, stating like what the addresses are, unit numbers, uh, their Terion vendor registration. Everyone, every builder has a unique uh, vendor registration. And this is a Terion number. When you do the uh, PDI, pre-delivery inspection, you get a something that starts with an H and then uh, uh, your own uh, registration number. So you need that to register your unit for Terion warranty. I'll probably do one more video on Terion warranty down the road. But basically, it's a warranty for your unit. If something goes your wrong, something goes wrong with your unit within two years inside, the builder has to cover that. You know, something outside structurally, you know, the you know builder has to cover up to like seven years. So that it kind of lays all that out. Um, so basically, the purchase price is what you agreed when you bought the property. So this is the the amount of money that you bought for, and this is how much you paid to date. Now they'll just say, okay, you know what? That's how much money you paid. That's what it is. And this is the final deposit that you have to pay. So they say, this is how much money I need. Plus, they'll say, you know what? Uh, there's something called occupancy fee. So when you buy a, uh, uh, in, when you do the interim closing, you have to uh, pay something called the occupancy closing fee. Uh, sorry, occupancy fee. What that is, is like a rent. Uh, it's like a rent, monthly rent fee. Let me show you what the breakdown of that is, right? So it usually, you know, estimated total common expenses. That's like, that. that is like a maintenance fee that you say. And then you have to share the portion of property tax, right? And then you also have to, this is the biggest portion, which is this is interest of the builder. So builder has a 160, $20 million uh, sort of the loan to build this whole unit until you buy and pay your mortgage or will transfer the, the, that $1 million that you know, purchase price you're, you're paying to the builder. So what they wanna do is it's substantially done, like 70% done. So they want to, uh, want you to the, the 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 buyer to share the portion of their interest. So that's what this is. It's a portion of their interest only, not the principal interest only. Adding up all that, uh, their property tax, their uh, you know interest. Uh, the only one thing that I want to mention is that this property tax you'll get it back at the final closing. Um, you know they just want you to prepay it, but they're gonna actually um, you know give a credit for this at the end uh, because. You know, like once the property tax is assessed, they know exactly how much that is. And then they say, you know what, you know, you're supposed to pay this much as an owner, but we're going to give you credit for whatever you pay during the uh, interim closing from the interim closing onto the final closing. OK, so remember this number here, 54145. And they also want us the uh, solicitor certified check adding this much. And you notice that what? Well, why is it from from that? Like that's how much I have to pay every month, right? That's that amount. Well, if you think about this, if you look at this number, the closing is not on November first. Closing it on November fifth, right? Why would we want to pay the first five days of the maintenance fee because we we didn't occupy the uh, the unit? So the builder has supposed to give you credit for that five days, and that's why you know divide that by thirty days, and. Uh, you know, for five, five for first five days, we have to get a credit for it. That's why it goes down to twenty eight four five. So adding that number with that number, let me just get a little fancy here. Adding this number and with that number, so then you're gonna come up with this number right here, right? So that fifty six nine nine zero seven two. That's the number that we have to pay, plus the million dollar question, the legal fee. Now it varies depending on the law firm. I'm not, I can't really generalize how much that is, but usually it ranges between four to five hundred dollars. 
uh, you know, you have to pay the uh, the legal fee plus HSD. Uh, and then there's this fixed cost, right? You know, like this is some of the examples, right? But, you know, photocopies, postage, courier, you understand that. Bank charges, yes, you know, certifying the check. Uh, there's a software charges, right, to, to register uh, certain things. We have to uh, charge software fee for using a uh, something called TerraView to register title, uh, to search for something. So all that and, you know, say the legal fee is eight twenty nine fifty six, right? And then you'll add it to this, you'll add it to this, and then you'll get that amount, 